Hello and welcome to Bricks and Banner, the show with real talk from the custom LEGO community. I'm your host as always, Billy, and before we jump into things, I want to give another huge shout out to my friend Charlie who created this theme music. If you like what you hear, please consider checking him out. He is linked in the description. With that said, let's get right into things. This episode is bittersweet to say the least. Today we are joined by a long-standing community member who recently announced that they will be leaving. During his stay in this community, he has risen to the top with customs that incorporate many different mediums and unique techniques. He even expanded into his own brand with resin printed parts within this last year and has grown exponentially. That's right, this episode we are joined by Tristan, aka Custom Brick Builder, and it was a real honor and pleasure talking to you bro and I wish you the best going forward. So with no further ado, enjoy my conversation with Tristan. And we're here with Tristan, aka Custom Brick Builder. How are you doing, man? Doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really glad that I was able to get you on. Um, I I'm, We might as well just hit it right off the bat, address the elephant in the room. You're leaving the community. Yeah, that's right. In just it's <laughs> probably a couple of weeks, I think. Mm. It's a sad sight to see. You've really built a huge reputation. So there will be a lot of people who miss you, but I'm really excited for you and the opportunities in the future. Um, but I'm glad we could get this together. Final words, <laughs> you know, a yeah, parting yeah. gift to the community, a conversation that could stay up for a while. Um, but yeah, how's that whole process been? Just kind of the moving past this whole, this big chunk in your life and liquidating your collection and all that. It's, I'm not done yet. The website itself for the resin printed parts, that's all done. It finished up uh, Sunday. So now it's just mm-hmm. packing up a ton of orders. Um, I still got to go through my personal collection of builds and figures and stuff like that but um so far so good i'm trying to get a final five painted figures just to be like okay these are my last figures yeah yeah. we'll get into that later for sure i got some questions about that and you wanted to like incorporate a storyline too like i really want to dive into that that's gonna be cool yeah all right so just getting started we'll go all the way back what what made you start like go the extra mile and make like a Flickr page and, you know, really get involved in the community itself. Ooh, that's a good question. I thought you were going to ask the start of customizing, but the start of Flickr, I think it was um, a lot of like behind the scene. Like I would Google custom figures and I'd see a bunch of it come from Flickr. I would see um, Aaron's photos, LM9 Productions. Yeah, yeah I'm, call- uh, I'm calling with him on Thursday to uh, get an episode with him and for sure. It's going to be oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, he was a huge inspiration from the start. I'd see AV figures, Andrew, when he started mm-hmm. sculpting and, or when he was sculpting and painting only. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, but but people like that wanted, made me want to post my stuff on Flickr and see how it did, see if there's any uh, anybody else. Basically, just being in a community with people that share a common interest, I think really was the exciting part for me. Right. So how long had you been doing it before you decided to, you know, go the next step and make the, a Flickr page and get involved? Um, maybe a year. I don't know. It was, it started off with Sharpie and clone troopers. Like I was just going to say it. I was, (laughs) you beat me to it. I was going to say, so you started with Sharpie clones, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's the start of it. (laughs) The regrettable past, but, um, there's something about it. I was just talking with Nate. There's something in everyone's DNA that you just, you got to start with the Sharpie clones. Yeah. And it's not even anything else. It's not like you don't start with city figures. You start with Sharpie and clone troopers. And That's right. Yeah. Like we could totally scribble on like a plain yellow head or something, but no, it's no, got to be a clone troopers. Trooper. It's got to be a clone that trooper. Quadruple in value over the course <laughs> of five years. Of course. So from there, how did you? Uh, how was Flickr for you? Did it treat you well? Did you really get involved in the community from there? No, I didn't get involved in Flickr community at all. I mean, I'd post stuff and I'd comment, and I knew um, a couple people on there. Mm-hmm. But because I was using mobile, I oh. didn't have any of like the instant messaging or yeah. any any one-on-one conversation opportunities. 
a lot of the people I talk to from like the military side of the community mm-hmm. always have just humongous rose tinted glasses for the flicker scene. And it was great to see like the original builders and be involved in that. But I had the same experience as you with that was not isolating exactly, but it was really hard to engage as compared to uh, Instagram as nowadays. So yeah, yeah I can totally. definitely feel that. When did you, do you feel like once you transitioned onto Instagram that, uh, you know, you felt m- more a part of the community and started to really branch out? Oh yeah, totally. I think in between Flickr and Instagram, I joined a discord server oh, um, okay. called the Senate bricks with uh, Teo's Lego garage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I kind of, I kind of um, got into the more in depth of a community thing. And then I moved to Instagram from there once I started posting pictures and making a lot more figures. And then that's when it, that's when it started taking off. Awesome. So what were you doing about on the time that uh, you started with the Instagram? Were you decaling, painting, sculpting? Um, I was, I was painting a little bit, but primarily decaling because it, at the time it was how long it would take me to do a figure painted wouldn't come out as cool as I would if I spent the time decaling it. But yeah, I think it's most mostly decaling. Right. Around what time did you uh, actually start up the Instagram? Instagram started, I think, in 2018, in okay. January. Sweet. Yeah, that was my first. Was there a specific moment like on Instagram that like skyrocketed your page? Because now at this point, you're a colossal page and everyone knows your name in the custom scene or Star Wars side of things. Was there one post or has it been like a steady growth all the way up? Um, I think looking back, like if you look at numbers, it was steady growth. But there's a there's a figure that did it for me. Like I was like, hey, I feel pretty good about this. Looking back, it's not so great. But <laughs> at the time, it was uh, it was like a Star Wars, the Old Republic Mandalorian mm-hmm. that I posted in June 2019. Okay, I might be wrong. I joined the community in January of 2019. The oh, Instagram wow, okay. community. Well, that's very recent then. Yeah, I, it was that. It was that figure. It was uh, glued Mega Bloks parts and a silver paint with a gold visor. Mm. But from there, that's when now. I felt. Yeah, it's all the way down there. <laughs> I'm seeing a Mall Super Commando that I'd never seen before. That's pretty neat. That was my first full sculpted figure, I think. Oh, okay. See, what I love a lot about your figures, especially later on, is you've combined a lot of different mediums into it. And even, um, say, like the magnets and all. What got you started to experiment with magnets? Oh, magnets. I think Noble Artists on YouTube. He did a lot of uh, clone customization. And he was just getting started with magnets and stuff like that. And then he stopped posting videos. So I ordered some magnets and I started playing around with them and using them for everything from visors and antennas to backpacks and a bunch of other stuff. Mm. But yeah, Noble Artist was a, a huge inspiration for a step up from Sharpie clones. <laughs> I'd never heard of him. Did you get involved much with the YouTube um, Lego community? No, not at all. That seemed too intimidating. It seemed like a lot of work because I don't know a whole lot about editing or YouTube mm. in general. I never watched YouTube at all. Like It wasn't until... I went on Instagram that I figured out who MGF Customs was. Oh wow. Which is pretty shocking. But <laughs> that that is wild. <laughs> yeah. But no, I never got really involved with the YouTube scene. Fair enough. Just the past couple of guests I've been talking to, they like talking about it and I it was a side of the community that like I was totally unaware of. Like I knew people were posting there, but they were talking about it like it was better than Flickr. Like people were just having full conversations in the comments. I was like, that's that's wild. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Like they were just having like just the people who would be watching the videos, just a re- reoccurring buddies, like, oh hey, new video, how you doing? <laughs> like this, that's awesome. I can't even imagine. S- seems like more of a home field than Flickr. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I found somebody finally who shares the same sentiment about Flickr to Instagram. Like Instagram has treated me way better. Oh like, yeah. That's, I've really felt like I have a home there and sprouted into the community. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like the feel on it and it's a lot easier to, to post and to share it. Mm-hmm. It's uh more mobile based. 
which I think makes it easier to get a bigger audience of people. Because Flickr, you ask someone, um, do you have a Flickr account? That's pretty rare. But if you ask about Instagram, then right. you're talking. Everyone's got an Instagram, sure. Yeah. So as you've kind of developed along between, you know, just getting a name for yourself from the painting, sculpting, decaling, whatever, you've turned yourself into a bit of a brand through numerous facets. So you, I believe it was first that you had um, Forge cast some of your Stormtrooper, or I'm not actually sure the proper name of these. Clone Trooper. It's... Are they? Was it a clone? Yeah. Yeah, it was oh, a goodness. P2 Clone Trooper. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. See that? Uh, I'm just such a Star Wars virgin. Like I see that um, that helmet shape, and I think stormtrooper. But yeah, so was that one of the first sort of business side of sort of aspects of your stay in the community, getting those uh, produced by Forge? Like more of the buy sell community side. Yeah, of it. yeah. Um, I think it started with decaling just okay. before then, but it wasn't like I was cranking out figures every single day it was a figure here and there that i decided to sell but yeah i think the casts really uh really kicked it off with awesome. um, that clone trooper sculpt how was the process working with forge on those oh that was when forge was in the mega blocks community strictly mega blocks that was the golden age for working with forge yeah mm -hmm. him, we've known each other for about a year and a half now i think um it was super nice really easy guy to talk to and uh, communicate with and he got those casts out and i was able to to crank out clones without having to spend hours sculpting each and every one but that was right. a really easy way to streamline uh paint process for me was it easier because he wasn't in such high demand being in the mega blocks community yeah a hundred percent Things yeah, that times have changed. Times have changed a ton. Now he's <laughs> blowing up with Lego, moving on to his own action figure stuff. Yeah, yeah, which we'll get into later. Those have been really interesting, though. I, it's a unique take with everything. Yeah, totally. So from there, how long was it? Did you get into the auction scene first, or did you start with the resin printing soon after? Oh, I completely forgot about the auction scene. That's a good point. Um, I think... It was after I released those resin, resin, or I didn't even sell the resin cast, I don't think, actually. But it was when I had ordered those mm -hmm. that I did an auction with Teo, like a like a co-op auction where we both streamed at the same time on Instagram. Sure. And then, and then from there, yeah, I didn't touch on too many auctions. Um, I just went and did commissions a lot of the time. Okay. And that was that was fun. From what I've learned talking to Griffin, all a lot of the painters really frown, not frown on commissions, but are like, don't talk to me about commissions. I don't do commissions. What was different for you that you were more interested in uh, doing the commissions? My favorite part about customization is the painting process and then looking at the custom and then seeing my skills improve. I was mm -hmm. never much of a big collector for anything because once I have something, it's going to get dusty on a shelf or it's going to end up being put in a box and getting ruined. Mm. And then so when I had people willing willing to buy my figures, I was like, sure, why not? Um, it'll go to someone who, who might even appreciate, appreciate it more than I do. And it'll help me further my uh, customizing career, if you want to put it that way. Right. No, that's awesome. Did you stay consistent with uh, doing commissions and the auction sort of thing, like both at the same time? Or once you got more involved in the auction scene, did uh, commissions take the wayside? I think I did a total of two or three auctions only. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I focused mostly on commissions, uh, building a good fan base. Like I'll recommend to everybody, you you make a fan base first. You don't jump in the community trying to make money, but that's a separate point. Um, absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was making commissions for people, especially those who are who, who I talked to a lot because I know they made a lot of good recommendations. So I made the figure and, and sold it to them. Mm. But that took up a good a good chunk of my uh, Instagram page. When did you decide to uh, make the custom packaging? Because when I saw those, that really blew me away. Because it had been an idea I had in the back of my mind for a while. Uh, so to see that come to life is really cool. Custom packaging. That's a... I don't remember what figure that started with. But I think it was um, looking at... Was it printed cases or... 
the clamshell packaging, you know, mm-hmm. like the ones that um, right. like Citizen Brick or Minifigure. Eclipse graphics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, start like that. But I was like, it would be cool to just display a figure inside a box without it getting dusty. Back to my problem with sitting on a shelf getting dusty kind of thing. <laughs> um, packaging to complement the figure. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much how it started. Sweet, yeah. I've, I've really appreciated those. It takes it to another level. And I've, I've been really interested to see the growth of not, not necessarily commission, but just like the custom works being more publicly for sale. Like you see all the big businesses that are selling something in a mass production, but I felt like the custom work sort of was underground. So seeing you and Hoodie and other big names get a spotlight in auctions and having a public sort of for sale side was really interesting. And that, uh, that took it to the next step. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really cool to see that grow in the community. Cause I know like the buy sell of, uh, of mainly Star Wars figures was, was growing a lot, you know, I have a ton mm-hmm. of auctioneer pages, but then there's people that want a figure that looks cool is arguably better than Lego and something they can call their own. Like, Hey, that figure is mine and there's nothing else like it. And so that was kind of the, the main demand that I was helping to fulfill. That's Same a really thing with good Griff. point. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any specific thoughts about the auction scene? Has it been in decline now, or is it still going strong? Hmm. I think it's very, very oversaturated. I don't think it's uh, declining because people are still paying for still figures. Buying, right? Yeah, yeah. If people are buying, it's not going to be a decline. I just think it's harder to grow because at this point you have um, reputable people in the community um, and everyone has their own client base or, or specific buyers that come and buy reoccurringly. I mean, right, I'm trying to right. word that. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a reoccurring customer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone has their, their, their own audience is from what it seems like. So I can't imagine what it's like having to grow in an already from start. Yeah. Which yeah. kind of goes back to the point you got to build a fan base sort of first. Absolutely. Before you could worry about trying to monetize your work. Yeah. And then you've got big auctioneers. Some are venturing into their own custom figures, um, printed tiles, sets, uh, having customizers send their work in. So everyone's got their own niche, niche almost. Yeah. Yeah. In auctions, which I think is cool to see, but I don't think it's in decline by any means. I haven't seen much of the auctioneers uh, doing kits, but I don't really follow much of the auction scene, but that's really interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that goes, plays out in the end. Mm -hmm. So moving on then, which one of the things you're most known for uh, entrepreneurial wise is your resin printing stuff. How, how did you get started with that? Were you always interested in, um, you know, 3D modeling things or just something that, how did it grow? How did it start? Um, in terms of designing, I took a, I think it was three years ago, I took a Blender 3D design and animation uh, elective in high school. Mm. It was very, very basic. I don't, I knew the interface of the 3D design program and that's about it. Um, so that was a part of where the experience came from. But I think it was a year ago, like just about a year ago, that um, resin printing started growing like not necessarily with Lego, not yet, but with uh, hobbyists in uh, Warhammer minis and things like that. Because I'd right. go through Warhammer tutorials for painting yeah. and then yeah, see yeah. that these things were 3D printed. And I have a regular 3D printer, um, but to see that things so small didn't have those layer lines and that it was so like a small print, super detailed, and it looked really, really clean. Um, that's when I started considering resin printing. Um, but I'd never, never pulled the trigger on it because I was satisfied with commissions. Mm. And then uh, Nate's minifigs jumped right into it. And man, he went full swing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, man, I'm a huge fan of his Mandalorian armor because that's, that's what made it possible for me to do my, uh, my CBB Mandalorian clan. Mm. Yep. And I still have a ton of Nate, Nate's parts too. Um, but then, yeah, after that, I wanted to um, make some of my own too. And it started off with the idea of droids. 
that's yeah that's the other thing right there droids is my like my passion project with star wars M- making uh the joints the elbows the knees all the posability yeah i wanted to get into the ball joints with you that's such a huge and innovative thing i was so blown away by those yeah that's that's definitely what kicked it off what made me pull the trigger on it um after saving up a little bit and uh yeah that's that's basically what it was speaking of an influx in the auction game what do you feel about um in the resin printing world that now a lot of resin printers are uh, popping up it's expected mm. um the the machinery itself isn't expensive um it's yeah i i expected that there was going to be a lot of people to jump on it and um for whatever reasons you know to provide cool parts for the community or to make Just a, a quick buck right. yeah yeah motives aside though it was expected i yeah. think it's cool to see a variety of products out there definitely i agree um but then it, at the it's same cool time that something like this has such a low barrier to entry mm-hmm. um but there's definitely a lot of people that are just hopping on the bandwagon to try and make a buck. It'll be interesting to see how people try and differentiate themselves in the space. Yeah. I think what helped, um, at least for me personally, was the fact that I had a, a name reputation exactly. to, to build it off of with a history the of... The reoccurring theme here is build a fan base first. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that undoubtedly helped you. And just to launch it from the get-go, having people know you and you're an audience to show it off to and personally it was a lot easier than making tutorials on youtube for example because Mm. you have um a lot of people ask me so how do you how do you sculpt or uh, what paints do you you know like help me customize right right and so i was like okay here have some resin parts (laughs) (laughs) and that's worked out that help helps me a ton um when it comes to like oh well how should i start I think I recommend resin parts now. You get the 3D surface, um, easier to paint than a regular flat minifigure. But um, yeah, that it helped that side too. That Yeah, that was such a great point. Again, when I was talking to Nate recently, he brought that up. And it was an aspect I totally hadn't considered about the resin printing stuff. Because for me, I thought about it more as catering to the people who are diehards. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen it as something that would like bolster the community and bring in a lot of new people because it would make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting how that's actually growing a community now. Yeah. It's along the lines as decaling, you know, AV figures when he went full steam ahead with decaling, you can get a really cool clone trooper for like under 10 bucks worth of parts. Right. Um, yeah, you can get a cool Lego figure, and same thing with resin printing for for a low cost. Um, you get this really cool, realistic figure that you made yourself. What do you feel like is the next step for resin printing going forward? Like in the big picture, do you have any predictions in that sort of sense? Big picture resin, ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I think posability for Mm. not just droids but drones or figures in general that have functioning parts is Mm going to grow a lot Um, i've already seen a handful of really really cool models out there with posability um pete has that titanfall drone yep yep um lego enthusiast with the grievous that's that's a cool ball jointed model and um exquisite bricks with the r2 all designed by Morphonauts, but um, just really cool functional figures, pieces. Absolutely, yeah. That'll be an interesting thing to see keep on uh, being explored. What do you think about, I've seen a couple times now, the like extra long legs that are resin printed. Mm-hmm. Have you ever used those? I had some on my website. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I'm paint. this is my first time painting up a pair for one of the final five figures. Um, It's easier than cutting up real Lego parts to make your own long legs. To extend them, sure. Yeah, yeah. I did that for a couple of figures. I mean, it's not difficult. It just takes time. But I find it a lot easier to just resin print and then use those 
Yeah, seeing those was a very interesting. Because, like, as of right now, all the people that are sort of experimenting with more body part type things are doing, like, the mech sort of genre. So to see stuff get more explored in uh, actual minifigure body parts will be will be exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what uh, other uses Nate will have for those uh, larger minifigure bodies and the legs and the arms. Because mm. I know he's experimenting with different sizes. Oh, I didn't know about bigger bodies. That'll be cool. Yeah, like the, uh, I think Mr. Incredible, like around that size. I don't know if you've seen uh, pictures from one of the Lego games, but Mr. Mm. Incredible has like a I'll have to look that up. slightly bigger body than the rest, enough to dif- differentiate the size between minifigures. I'm checking this out right now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, it's like super buff. What? Yeah gonna get buff lego figures now that is wild oh my gosh and like some meaty arms yeah dude that's gonna be so weird personally for me i think that'll be really cool for star wars because you have so many different aliens Mm -hmm. that to use that torso to expand the uh the variety i'm I'm looking forward to that i'm here for it it's reminding me of i don't know the actual name of the character um one of the recent um figures that were entered into Griff's contest mm-hmm. from the animated uh, Clone Wars movies. Uh, I wish I could recall the name of the actual character, but I'll have a I'll have a photo of it up in the post wrap up. Okay. Oh, wait, I found it. I found it. Uh Dirge. Oh, Ollie made that yep, Dirge yep. is beautiful. I had never seen one done bef- before that. Like, yeah. Me I can't either. recall another time. And for such an iconic character. Oh, it looks like he might have extended the legs on this as well or used the resin ones, which I just noticed. I think that's Lego parts. Yeah. The legs are definitely extended, though, so maybe he modified himself. And that's sculpted, too. I, mm-hmm. That impressed me was the fact that it's sculpted. Like, I know I'd like to make the bold assumption that we're going to get a resin printed dirge soon. That's a it's a bold claim, but probably you're probably right on that. Because I know Star Wars is making a comic to make him canon and all that. And I think he's a really really? cool character. Yeah. Well, Ollie did great with that sculpting. Ollie made it his profile picture now, so it's official. It's definitely going to be... It's going to be the next wave. Oh, yeah. Going to get resin (laughs) printed dirges all over the place. It's the next figure, everybody. (laughs) But that's like the pinnacle of just big buff bodies right there. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look too out of place, especially with the extended legs. Yeah, and the extended legs still keep that Lego look. It's just long. Mm -hmm. Tall. (laughs) I had mentioned this one to Nate. Have you heard about uh, plagues? Plagues? Plagues, yeah. Plate legs? No. (laughs) This is a... I don't even know what you would call it. It's not a well-kept secret from the military community. It's more like... Is that where they the, use those one by one plates the, that's, to extend that's all, their legs? That is plate feet. This this is another level. I'm sending you it. This is uh more like something we could we wish we could just keep on under wraps indefinitely. Oh my god. It's a it's a dirty <laughs> dirty sin of the Lego military community. Plagues. Wow, that's <laughs> purest customization has gotten so far <laughs> i don't know if that's the best way to describe it um yeah they I've were seen too worried good... with if they could not if they should if yeah i've seen a lot of great techniques and mo- techniques in mocks but this is the most unique i've seen i wonder i was talking to gabe about it recently and he sent me uh, an updated design that i was actually a big fan of Mm-hmm. oh yeah i got it i'm gonna send you a photo uh, i'll see if i can uh post it in the wrap-up if he hasn't already posted them himself but he used different uh feet i believe they were from like the jack stone figures oh whoa and they look like 30 times better it makes like, it look natural is that rubber bands on the ankles on the right one yes yes oh that's that's pretty cool those i can like full fully get behind like no stop just i actually really fuck with those and then there's also the um he extended the hands a bit with a flex tube 
That's smart. I hadn't even noticed that until like the second look around on it. I I hate to admit that I actually really like these. <laughs> this is super different. <laughs> but they look good. They do. I I'm <laughs> I'm a big fan of these as opposed to the first iteration. Yeah. Um Yeah, these have some real viability. Wow. Yeah, people that make mocks have my respect a hundred hundred percent because there's so many regular Lego pieces that they turn and make uses into. But this looks really cool. We got a f- we. <laughs> you heard it here first, everyone. Tristan is pro plague. Pro plague. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe how hot how like how hot button this issue is. Like it is. <laughs> My last words in the community, pro plague, and I dip. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be my last story, just pro plague. Pro pl- hashtag pro plague. <laughs> Goodness. What a weird concept, but man, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, the the second, I'll have to double check uh, if I can post those, I hope so. The second wave is, uh, second wave of plagues is hitting. Yeah, you're going to have people listening to the podcast. I have no idea what we're talking about if you're not able to post it. Yeah, I post like a wrap-up every week, so they can kind of just scroll through the pictures and uh, find what we're talking about, hopefully. But then like half the time I forget what to add, and then there's only like two photos in the wrap-up. I'm oh, sorry wow. about that to every listener. <laughs> <laughs> so many random topics. Yeah. Or it's like, I don't know, there's just so many things that I think are like common knowledge, so then I dish like... While I'm scanning through to find what to add, I just kind of overlook those. And then there's probably there's probably a lot more things I should be adding to the wrap-up that don't make it. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were mentioning, again, with having uh, a lot more like flexibility, posability, and usage out of the resin-printed parts. You started working on some modular guns. How was that going for you? Um, yeah, I was able to release um, some clone commando guns, the DC 17s. I don't know. There's a star's name for it. I forgot it. And then uh, modular backpacks for them too, because Delta Squad has uh, a few different backpack combos, and I thought it would be cool to make those swappable. Mm. Um, that was a lot of fun to do. It took some um, some fine tuning to make sure the parts aren't super loose or super tight, but. Um, I think that was more of a personal project. Mm-hmm. Because what sort of interlocking system were you using for that? It was just friction. It just slides on. Like a was it like a square or a circle? Uh, it was a square. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, circles are are kind of kind of hard to to work with when it's resin on resin. Hmm. Why is why is that? There's a lot of friction. The resin that I was using at the time rubs a lot. And so you'll lose more and more material as time goes on. Okay. Um, yeah, that was actually an issue with the droids at first, which is why I kept the um, Lego antenna piece as the the joints. Mm. So you don't have to deal I with... I thought that was really... Yeah, I got a package from Pete and he included those for the joints. I thought that was pretty creative. Yeah. Yeah, those are super useful. Sorry, I, I think I had cut you off a bit. Why was uh, working on the modular guns a bit more of a personal project? Um, it definitely wasn't something that I was asked to do. Like a lot of the projects I was doing was based on demand from the community. Mm. Um, but this one I was like, man, it'd be cool to have, um, to to switch weapons and things like that on the same on the same blaster. Um, Absolutely. So it was a project pursued because of I I wanted to see it done, and mm. um, for me to be able to use in customizing. So AK. Long story short, they didn't sell super well. <laughs> That's really where I'm getting at. That's the point of it all. Yeah, yeah. But hey, they're all gone now. The 100% off took them away. That's true. Well, we didn't get to the 100% off. It stopped at 90, which oh, I don't really? know if that makes me feel better or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, now they'll be in people's hands and they get to appreciate them. They know what they were missing out on when they were 100%. And... uh hundred percent as in like full price (laughs) yeah yeah but yeah now they're out in the world so we'll see we'll see what happens with them Mm -hmm. i'm looking right now at that uh keeper fig you had made that uh that gun mod totally blew me away 
with the magnet. That was a lot of fun to do. That happened spontaneously. Is that gun actually like from the cannon or anything that you based off of, or was it just you just spitballing? Um, I used I was listening to audiobooks um, for Star Wars comics, and one of them was Darth Vader going back to the Jedi Temple and chasing after the uh, the librarian Jocasta New, and she pulled out like a weapon from the Jedi Vault or something like that. That was like a rifle powered by her lightsaber, and so that's mainly what oh. I based it off of. I thought it was the coolest thing too. That's awesome. But yeah, well, try- I'm so glad I asked that. I wasn't expecting much. <laughs> Much of a background. Was, yeah, but there was. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole comic about it. It's it's awesome. Yeah, the so, lightsaber bit, it was super cool too. And I, I, think, I was just looking at it, I was like, oh, this is a great idea that Tristan came up with. But No, this is the one that Star Wars came up with. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, no, either I, way. I'd eventually want to resin print this. Well, I would have wanted to resin print this. I might give designing a go um, sometime in the future, but it would be cool to uh, get these into to the hands of the community as well. Mm. Do you think there will be a point that you sort of come back in a like half capacity into the community, or are you done for good now? Um, in terms of like physical customizing, I don't, I don't really have plans to. Um, mm-hmm. I I do enjoy designing, and because it's behind the computer. I can do that pretty much wherever. I don't have to bring like a box of paint supplies or figures right, with me. Right. Right. So I think I'll do that. I was talking to Nate with it, and he'd be okay with um, if I if I designed for him and stuff like that. That's awesome. So that's that's as far as I'll go in to the community. But in terms of being active on Instagram, I don't have any plans to. Hmm. Understandable. Do you? Uh, are you planning to leave your page up? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Because Instagram is the only place I have these pictures aside from my camera SD card. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a quick reference for me. Mm. Is there any posts that you have uh, privated? Um, That's a good question. Any... How do I go here? Post archive. Okay. I have an auction post, a giveaway post, um, a sales post, and then a couple really weird fig barfs hmm. when I thought that those would get me good likes and follows, but <laughs> now I want to see these fig barfs. That's right up my alley. I'll send you a screenshot. Let's see if I can do this. I was just curious if there was a, a whole hidden archive of uh, CBB that'll never be discovered anymore. No, no CBB archives as far as I can remember <laughs> or as far as that I'll publicize. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've got like a hundred photos in my post archive from uh from Instagram of like full on figures and all. Really? Yeah. It's it's tough. I remember that middle post uh right below the giveaway contest with the guy with the green helmet. Yeah. I remember seeing that one. Yeah, that's when I was experimenting with photography. Um mm. trying to get cool looking backgrounds and I gave up on that. <laughs> <laughs> photography isn't my thing. Fair enough. But yeah, I've got like a lot, a lot. I like, I want to keep some of the older figures that I still enjoy and all, Mm -hmm. but there was a point in my posting that I was just like cranking figures out like every other day and they are, they're just not good. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't right. (laughs) They're just not like, nobody needs to see that. (laughs) So just brush them off to the side. Anything from the recent years uh, recent like year or so that I archived was just because the photo quality was super bad but I put it out anyway because I like felt like I needed to or something but like uh, there's some that are like straight up just like blurry I'm like bro <laughs> 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 like, like it's Instagram like nobody's really gonna see but like still you're gonna see that like yeah. that was that bad Billy posted a blurry photo guys <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending it to all my group chats <laughs> There was one that like was specifically blurry. I'll show you it. It was for uh, April Fool's Day, I believe. <laughs> I-, I think this is the best. Uh, I don't know if I had done many April Fool's posts in the past, but if I had, this definitely takes the cake as my best one. <laughs> it's just intentionally oh. trash. 
just oh boy. fake Lego and all. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask that, but I, I wasn't too sure because I don't know anything about the military side of the community. And I wasn't sure if these were like expensive custom parts or something. Oh, no, that's the pinnacle of customization, bro. Wow. That's, Lepin that ran customizing. Me 50 bucks a part. You don't even understand. Ooh, straight from China. Straight from China. I had to buy the whole Man. freight for it to come over. <laughs> that's uh, You should put that back up. Maybe. Maybe I'll just make that the only post that's up. Your primary, your uh, profile picture. Just change it with that. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's Lepin Customs or something. <laughs> just put a whole page for that. BM Lepin 4. Yeah, perfect. Going to go reserve go. that Instagram name right now. <laughs> Somebody will. Somebody will, and they're going to DM me a screenshot of it. <laughs> What do you think uh, kept you so involved in the community for so long? Um, I like I really like customizing. That's the main reason why. Mm. Um, to to be able to be involved in the community and see other people, other people's techniques, uh, figures, and things like that. That helped me to keep wanting to paint. Um, uh, made made a few good friends, which is which is awesome. Uh, talented painters, uh, and then seeing with resin printing that I can make it like a job for myself. Mm. That was super unexpected because um, I didn't expect it to kick off. But that that was another another reason why. Definitely. What for you is the uh, was your favorite part of the community? favorite part of the community um the progression the progression part of it um being on instagram for a couple years you see a lot of a lot of accounts develop into sales accounts painting accounts um photography accounts and i think that's super cool to see people start from from day one and then go to really really cool figures or shots or things like that mm. or be um really have a good name reputation on Instagram. I think progression was the funnest part for me or my favorite part to see. Yeah, I could agree with that. And then to see everybody um, for customizing specifically, like sharing techniques and then you see someone else apply it, and then someone else gives mm. a suggestion. And then it's like, you got this group growing and customizing, making better and better customs. And then that is one of the really cool things about the community. Um, I've seen it most in the military community, but it's cool to know that it happens a lot in the painting side too. It's just that like, if there's one technique or something that gets discovered or is like the real trend to make trend and then see how everyone applies it and uses it differently. That's always really fun. Yeah. There's Although definitely... at times it gets super played out, but that's there's true. always a, a spin of creativity to each other's uh, usage of it. So yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite custom you've ever made? Uh, I don't like this question. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all your babies? They're all all your favorites. You can't choose between children. Yeah, all the children that I sent away for money. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is it. This is the perfect last, you know, stand for your reputation in the community. You're pro plague, and you sent all your children away for money. Yeah, there's there's no better note to leave on than that. Yeah. <laughs> This is where the podcast end, guys. Um, it just cuts right there. Yeah. Never to hear from me again. Um, that's a hard one because every every time I make a custom, I want to make sure I get better and better with each one. And so my favorite custom at the time is all based on what my skill level was at that time. Um, my personal figure that I think looks the coolest um would be that nomad trooper based off of a one, a six scale action figure by Dewoon Customs um I feel like I did a pretty good job with the weathering uh, oh, it was yeah. a, a new a new kind of weathering for me and I like the aesthetic of the colors a lot I really like the usage of the cloth too Yeah that was a fun one that's a, a mod podge technique I picked up from Griff Oh, really? Just to keep it in uh, place? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, you take like a 
flimsy piece of cloth and you put it in the position you want to, like holding it down with tape, and you put Mod Podge over it and it like solidifies it in that position. Wow. So that's why all the folds and stuff are able to yeah. stay without messing up. That's so sick. The more you know. Yeah. But I think when it comes to like the figure that I felt like, wow, I really improved on this figure, mm. um, would be... I'm scrolling through all my posts right now because uh, the Jedi Guard droid that I did back in um, December of 2019... It's I'm like a for it Jedi Guard droid. Okay, you beat me to it. You sent it. <laughs> yeah, this one was. Oh, that is sick. That had a sculpted hood and cape, which was a pain to do. Um, and then yeah, the posable joints. Did you modify joints. the legs for that? Yeah, that and the arms too. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's oh, using wow. a lot of Lego parts. Wow. That's before resin printing. That's uh, yeah, that was a fun one. I like. What liked... was the body made from? I think the body is a Grievous, a, a newer Grievous, hmm. with the joints, and then the the little strap I think is from, like a Mega Bloks Destiny figure or something. That is but really yeah. cool. And it's got posable ankles too, which I didn't really incorporate into any of my later figures. What's your feeling on Mega Bloks? I was looking through it at one point and I saw that you had customized a Mega Bloks figure. Um I I like it. I like it a lot. I have a you I, I did have a bin full of them and I and I painted every now and then. Um it's miniature it's miniature action figures really. Mm. <laughs> um something that's Lego scale. And I like the uh the themes they had, or particularly Destiny, that they they did those figures, right? Um, but I after talking with like Forge, and then he, and then knowing a few of the other community members, I'm not. There's great people there, but I like the commu- the Lego community better because it's larger and um, I think a little more friendly to mm. to my to my page at least because i was at the time buying and selling figures right i haven't even like tried to discover that sort of community i haven't even i don't even know where to go to find that <laughs> yeah there's a there's some really i think the, the largest page i've seen has like eleven thousand followers maybe i gotta double check hmm. what was the name on that um that's a great question. <laughs> uh, oh, G Customs Creations. I'll send it to you. Uh, I think I talked with this guy a little bit. He's oh, super I see cool. It. But he's got a lot oh, of wow. Halo, Halo stuff. Yeah, that's another thing I know nothing about, but I think it looks really cool is uh, Halo figures. See, looking at these, because I don't know what like the originals were, I think they're just normal figures, but some of them I could tell, like, once I realized the one bit that was painted, it like all starts to unfold. I'm like, oh, he painted that too, and this too. Yeah, because really it looks nice. supernatural. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they look like a final product. But then you have to realize, yeah, Mega Bloks was not, didn't have this high tier of a, a rollout figure in all the sets. That's true. Yeah, these are great. It's just a realistic Lego, is the way I view Mega Bloks. But That's I, fair, yeah. I like it. Do you think that the Mega Bloks uh, ball joints and all inspired your work for the droids? Um, a little bit. Uh, yeah, because I was working with with Mega Bloks at the time, or at least with a couple customs. Um, but I mainly based the joints on two pieces. It's the the older skeleton arm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Lego lever. Those. Okay. Are my favorite two pieces. The um, using the old technique where you would make the ball joint arms with the uh the Lego, uh skeleton arms you were talking about that was fun. I've tried that once before. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It takes uh, patience <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Um, but yeah, it's a fun. It's a classic technique for me now. Exactly, I definitely a classic. I can't. Re- oh, I made. I had made and. 
a fully painted Spider-Man for a friend of mine. And so Whoa. that it wouldn't scratch the sides that I did the ball joint arms like that. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if I have a photo. It was pretty yeah. atrocious, but my friend really liked it. So that's all that matters. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in your archives? <laughs> <laughs> I never posted it. <laughs> he might have. I'm, I'm checking. He had a he has a photography page as well for uh, some customs. You could put a knife through the uh, arm socket sure too, and like spin it around a little bit, so it's a little bit looser, and then doesn't scrape the sides. Oh! It's, so it loosens up the socket, and, and then it won't be those... scraping necessarily. Yeah. Oh wow! It's just okay. sliding a little bit more. That's a. I'm gonna put that in the back pocket. I like that. That's a decalers technique. I think is how it started. Oh okay. That's the side profile of the. Uh, of Did you the do the mask? Here. I did do the mask. He didn't put it on there. Anyway, shout out to my buddy, Matthew. I love you. <laughs> He's at cherry underscore figs on Instagram. Shout out. Yeah, Spider-Man the, figures are too intimidating for me. Yeah, d- dude, when I, I wasn't so involved in trying to paint stuff at the time when I made that figure. Mm-hmm. So I was like way out of my league. I could probably do one a lot better now with the lines, but still. It still be fairly rough. But it'd be a lot better than it was then. Either way. Feel more comfortable doing it at least, right? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Did you see the lines on Nate's fig on the mask he made? Uh, the, li- like, the lines the are line already there? The or one he painted. painted um, the Spider-Man mask he just recently painted. Yeah, I don't understand how anybody can paint like that. Uh, it, literally unreal. Because... Here, let me let me walk you through the process of how i paint my lines okay i try my absolute hardest to get them thin and then when they're not thin i'm not surprised i just paint over with the base color yeah to make them appear thin <laughs> yeah exactly there is no way he did that on this because he used the um the spray paint gloss that's to get right. it like that he had to make every single one of those lines perfect I forgot he used the spray. I don't understand. (laughs) What? I... mm. Yeah, because those don't look like touched up lines either, because you can tell when someone touches up a line. Yeah, you can tell when they're touched up as well. So on top of it, you can tell that they're clean. Yeah. But it was just about impossible for him to touch them up. That's one thing I love seeing in the community, is clean line work in any figure. Oh my god, I just realized he painted the legs on this figure. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That Oh, it was a dual molded legs, huh? Yeah. And then he painted over. Dude, it. I literally didn't even <laughs> notice that the first. I was like, "Oh, those are cool legs from Lego." It just all ties in perfectly. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe this figure. For something so simple, there's such like a level of uh praiseworthiness to it. Yeah, yeah. Spider Man has to be one of the like well known characters that when people make customs of, I'm just shocked. I did like a half a Spider Man and then chucked it because I was not happy with how it came out. Mm. Yeah. Oh God! And now I'm looking at his actually like fully painted one. Like, yeah, uh, never. <laughs> just, um, just no. I was in a group chat with, I think it's Webhead Customs. I'll send you one of his Spider-Man pictures. Oh, I'm seeing the big bodies you were talking about. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, that's going to add a cool twist to customizing. That's insane. And that white is so crisp. What? Yeah, like, I don't know how you can just regularly, casually paint a Spider-Man figure. I don't... (laughs) Just casually. Another reason why I recommend unreal. resin prints is you don't have to do lines like that. Mm, man. Yeah, line work is crazy. White paint is crazy, bro. I've only just found a white paint that's not atrocious. Really? Yeah. It's uh, I know all you painters love using the uh, cheap dollar paints, but I'm a little <laughs> bit of a, a slut, and I think that using the Citadel paints makes me a better painter, so I use those. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> you do you. Um... <laughs> But uh, it wasn't the the Citadel white paint is also atrocious. It was a different uh, paint. I don't know the name. I could uh, I'll send you a pic later. I'll put it in the wrap up. But it is smooth as butter. I love it. 
Yeah, I like I love Apple Barrel. I still use it, but um, I I caved in and I got like the mega pack of the Army Painter paints. Mm. Love those paints so much. I haven't really experimented with those. I bought the wash from Army Painter mm-hmm. just because they were cheap, and I was too lazy to make washes. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I love those washes. I now that I have them, I don't remember what I used to do without before them. it, right? Yeah, right. Washes are addicting. I gotta like consciously be like, don't. You don't need to use it on this. It doesn't need it, but it'll look cooler. <laughs> it, it doesn't, doesn't need, need it. it. it doesn't. <laughs> what was your favorite product that you ever released? Ooh, favorite product. Um, well, it's a droid for sure. Mm. Can I guess it? Sure. The definitely not dark, dark trooper droid thingy. The not light trooper, the dark trooper. Not yeah. light trooper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, that one was cool. I like that one a lot. Uh, because I think it it fit the uh the scale and the proportions correctly. Mm-hmm. Man, I had to tell you the I had such a pain trying to get a good size for that head, because if you were to scale this up and put it into black series scale. It would look horrible. The head's supposed to be like half the size it is in this Lego form. But on the Lego figure, it looks horrible. Oh, it's supposed to be even smaller? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Like the proportions are technically off, but for Lego, you got to have no, big heads. No, it looks right. There's a weird thing with Lego that you have to play with the scale. It can't always be entirely accurate. Yeah. You either have to let go of certain details or, you know, play with the size so that it works unfortunately but yeah but for favorite product i think the commando droid is mm. my favorite um that one is great i always like commando droids i like the posability and the way they are in the clone war series um i had done more commando droid based customs using lego parts than any other droid before resin printing and so yeah. that's just like a and i mean i was just gonna say that was evident in the fact of the uh commando droid being one of your favorites yeah, yeah. The um, Jedi Gar droid. Yeah, that that's the one with the commando droid head primarily. Um yeah, that's my favorite for sure. That's awesome. Again, wrapped up here. One last question from Griff. Sweet. If you had more time to stick around in the community, what was another way you would want to grow your page? Another way I'd want to grow my page. Or the next thing you would think you would uh dive down the rabbit hole of. The next big venture. Cloth. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I have like store-bought cloth. I have a process, I have a process already of how to stiffen it. So it feels like Lego cloth, a way oh. to cut it, to mass produce it for like under two bucks. I need, all I needed to do was make a template and I didn't have time to do that. Uh, Goodness. That would have been the next move for me. I might have to hit you up on the on the after show on the DL about that, because I have been looking forever to find a, a good Lego cloth supplement. Mm-hmm. And the best supplement right now I found is just buying Lego cloth. <laughs> just <straight> yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just buy it Lego cloth off BrickLink and then cut it. That's the best bet. Here's one technique I'll share that that's relatively simple. Not the process I was going to use, but if you're looking to, to customize it mm. is you take an old piece of cloth that you feel is thin enough. And all you do is you spread, um, you brush on black acrylic paint on both sides until it's covered. Really? Because that not only stiffens it, but when you cut it, the edges don't fray because of the paint. Mm-hmm. And that I use for a long uh, time. Something Detroitica turned me on to, Tanner. He, uh, oh, what was it called? Like spray, uh, fray gone or fray be gone? I don't know. It was like an anti-fraying like liquid. Oh. Um. It's made like specifically for sewing and stuff like that. Um, and he came across it just for the cloth work he does. And it's I picked up a bottle of it. I've only used it like once or twice, but it's helped repair some of the cloth pieces I already had that were like yeah. starting to fray. And uh, any custom ones I cut up and need to give extra protection, it works pretty well for that. But I'm going to give that a try. Yeah, it works pretty well. So that's super cool, that, that liquid stuff. All right. Well, we've made it through. Moving on into the copper drop. Sweet. Let me pull up as the pictures. Ma- as many people know, the copper drop. If you like the product, you cop it. And if you don't, you drop it. So first up, we have can- from Cantina's Crafts, Tachanka, which is a fully resin printed 
figure uh, based off the character from Rainbow Six Siege. Um, what really blew me away with this is that it's literally completely resin printed. I was like, I was shocked to see that. Might not be entirely the move with the printed minifigure hands, but yeah. everything else I can almost get down with. I'm not a big uh, military fan. I'm primarily Star Wars, and mm -hmm. it looks amazing. Yeah, I'll give it that. It's just not my style, so I think I'd, I'd say drop. Fair enough. All right, next up, something maybe your, more your style, and we've already been discussing it, <laughs> is uh, Nate's Minifig's new Spider-Man masks. Unpainted, but how are you feeling on that? I feel terrified, but... <laughs> I love I love Nate's products, um, and I think this would give me a reason to make a Spider Man. So I'd say cop. Mm. Definitely a drop for me, just because I'd have to paint it, and I don't want to have to paint <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> now, if you did printed masks, ooh, now we're talking. Yo, that would be intense. I don't even. I can't even imagine printers matching that on a curved surface. That'd be insane. Maybe decals. Decals could do it. Decals yeah. could do it. But yeah, that's a that's an awesome product. And he's got a couple new helmet sort of things going on, which are really sweet. All right. And the last item up, we have Forge 510's Straight Shooter minifigure statuette. He's got a whole series of these going on that are minifigure, like body, style, and size. Um, yeah. But in like almost action figure posed sort of forms. How are you feeling about this one? I have two perspectives on this. Both of them are cop for personally. I think it looks great. It's Lego Warhammer, I think. Um, mm. It'd be super cool to get different highlights and details because it's a still figure, so you don't have to worry about it, how it's going to look at this angle or things like that. Um, so personal use, yeah, 100%. Um, in terms of business growth, yes, too, because I know a lot of people are hesitant towards um, chunky Lego figures. Mm-hmm. But Definitely. I think this would be a great way to like expand the market into these cool collectible statues that um because figures are gonna go on your shelf anyways, so why not have them posed? That's a great point. It's sort of reminding me, oh man, I wish I could remember the name of the company. But uh Griff turned me on to them and he painted up a few of those like uh um, oh, cyborg alien astronauts. Not alien, uh, zombie astronauts of like yeah. the classic space looking guy. It reminds me a lot of that, that it was using, taking the Lego form, uh, Lego minifigure form and posing it and making it more of like a collectible, collectible miniature, mm -hmm. which I thought was super interesting. Yeah, that's it. Skyborn miniatures. Yeah. Skyborn. Sky, Skibbers. I don't Skibborn. know. Skibborn. <laughs> I don't know. They're awesome though. Those surprised me. I like those a lot too. I picked up way too many, but, and that's they're the way it goes. all. All mostly unpainted, but <laughs> but yeah, those are really great. Yeah, for sure. I, I I'm really hoping that within the next year, the community really goes for like statue like figures because I I made a couple too, um, and they were really fun to paint, and I think they look cool. Mm. That's, that's actually kind of been an idea I've had for a while is actually making like a statue statue minifigure, mm -hmm. and then like painting it up like bronze or something. I don't know been an idea i've had for a while but i don't know what to do with it anyways use washes easy <laughs> true great point love me some washes <laughs> all right well we've made it through it's been an absolute honor to talk to you and get you on before uh before you leave the community i'm so excited for you and your future and i hope that you definitely uh take nate up on that and to design a, a couple things in the future for us because we'll be here We'll, we'll eat it up. Uh, you got any last words for the listeners? Um, thanks for having me, first of all. I think that's it, this was this was really fun. Um, for listeners, patience and practice is all it takes for customizing. That's my word of mm -hmm. advice. Um, and then CBB Legacy. Stay tuned for that as my last post. CBB Legacy. Oh, yeah. that sounds exciting. Oh my god, we didn't get into the five final figures. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we're going to touch on that or not. <laughs> no, my bad. You want to hop in? We'll just uh, touch on that real quick before you yeah. go. Yeah. So you're going to do five final figures as uh, before you leave. They're going to be auctioned or 
I'll probably. I don't. I don't know if I'll, I'm not going to keep the figures, Billy. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. They'll they'll for sure be sold. Um, okay. I don't know how. Um, but these five final figures, the plan is to have them be different from each other, have different storylines. Um, I'm gonna write a paragraph or two about each figure, mm-hmm. and then that'll branch off into CBB Legacy. My idea of it is to have it as an open-ended community storyline. Um. Griff Hoodie Studios, he's going to be making a like a little insignia for it for me. Awesome. Um, I just think it'd be super cool to come back to the community in months, years, and to see um, what everyone's been able to make. Um, and it'd be really cool if they were able to expand or introduce their own characters into this little mini storyline I have planned. That That is really remarkable. That'll be a lovely thing. I hope I can participate as well. I'm sure yeah. some of the themes will inspire me, so I'll I'll get to working on one. Um, that that's a really awesome idea. I'm excited to see that as well. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to it a ton. And with that, thank you again for being on, and it's been a real pleasure to talk to you and get to know you a bit. So I'll see you around. All righty, see ya. And that was my conversation with Tristan, aka Custom Brick Builder. I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in what Tristan and I were talking about just at the end there about his uh, CBB legacy figures, he's just posted them. Make sure to go check them out. And they'll actually be available for purchase through Hoodie Studios Auction on July 10th. So support the homies. Go check it out. Thank you all again for listening. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. I want to give a huge thank you to our patrons over on Patreon.com. We have Seth, Luger Enthusiast, Tupolev, Mike, Justin, Francisco, Dash Bricks, PK Custom Lego, Milo, Dr. Xbox Live, Jay, Mini Bigs, and Christopher. I cannot thank you all enough, and if you're interested in supporting the podcast as well, you can check out the link tree on our Instagram bio. Once again, a quick shout out to my buddy Charlie for creating the theme music. Please show him support and check out his work anywhere you stream music. It is linked in the description. Thank you all again for listening, and make sure to tune in next time as I have on LM9 Productions, a.k.a. Aaron.